Bang & Olufsen, more than any other home audio brand, knows how to sell a certain lifestyle. Question is, have they done it again with their new Bio Sound Theater? <laughs> The Bio Sound Theater is currently the world's most expensive sound bar. And this all-in-one Dolby Atmos surround sound system has 12 speakers arranged to direct sound at you as well as toward your side walls and ceilings for a 7.1.4 Atmos effect. A total of 12 amplifiers are used which include two 100 watt amps for the woofers and 60 watt amps for the remaining 10 drivers that are capable of an SPL level of 112 dB, making the theater great for medium to large size rooms. The HDMI ARC EARC input can support signals, albeit in pass-through, up to 8K60 at 40 gigabits per second. Now there are three additional HDMI inputs for your other source components, such as say a Blu-ray player, Apple TV, or gaming console. There's also support for Bluetooth 5.1, AirPlay 2, Chromecast, Spotify Connect, Wi-Fi, and more. And if you're an existing BO customer, you can connect the theater to certain current as well as some older BO speakers, such as the BO Lab 28 we reviewed last year, and effectively turn the theater into a dedicated center channel and a hub for a true BNO surround sound system, which is a nice touch. The theater is available in a variety of options, with the entry point being the natural gray melange finish. Our sample, however, is the natural oak, which comes with the more expensive wood slat grill and a chrome-like aluminum base. It's further customizable depending on your preference for placement. You can mount the theater on a table like we did or to your wall. You can even purchase the theater as part of an entire TV setup with an LG screen. The theater is a big soundbar. Think Ambio level big, only far more elegant. We tested it with the 98 inch TCL XL series mini LED TV as well as our favorite 85 inch Sony X95K. And we used our Apple TV 4K and PlayStation 5 to run it through its paces, but I gotta say, this is a big soundbar that looks right at home below big TVs. Setup is one area where my experience as a reviewer is bound to differ from yours, the customer. The good news is that according to Bang & Olufsen, they will personally handle all of the assembly and in-home installation of the theater system. But if for some reason you end up having to set it up yourself like I did, be sure to set aside a really good chunk of time because it is a cumbersome job and not an experience that I would call elegant or high-end. Once assembled, getting the theater up and running on your home's network is very easy using the BNO app, and I am very familiar with the app, so setup was really just second nature. Its day-to-day -day livability, it's no different than any other current BNO product. So if you have, for example, the BNO level or the balance, setup will feel pretty much identical. The theater comes with a calibration mic that uses the app to run the bar through a series of sweeps that level matches the drivers and tunes the bar to your listening position. And you have the ability to save settings for multiple listening positions, not to mention sound presets, which I found very helpful. Honestly, I had zero issues with the app or adjusting the theater, even on my aging iPhone. So props to B&O there. Few brands allow for their customers to customize the sound of their products as well as Bang & Olufsen. Because if you don't love the sound of the theater in its factory settings, you can tinker with it until you find a sound that's right for you, making the bar just super flexible. While I created a few custom profiles, we mostly listened to the theater using the movie preset right out of the box. And speaking of the movie preset, this bar measures well and has a response that one would expect from a soundbar in a movie type profile. I'm talking slightly boosted bass, recessed mids, and an extended treble. What I found interesting was the sizable gap that existed between 150 and 400 hertz, give or take. This dip wasn't all that audible in everyday listening because the bass below 150 hertz really does help to mask it. Nevertheless, it's it's present. What I didn't expect is that when I turned off B&O's house processing true image and I put the bar into its direct mode, that got rid of the dip, resulting in the bar throwing a far more linear response, one that I was able to then adjust to near textbook neutrality. Beyond the measurements, B&O products manage to do something few other products can match. They keep you listening. I mean, the first night, all we did was listen to music, playfully fighting over the remote, deciding what to listen to next. The theater easily pulls double duty as both a two-channel speaker system as well as a home theater one. And everything from Lady Blackbird and Live to old classics from Elvis, it just sounded so clean, so clear, and well, right. But in that B&O right sort of way. 
But turning our attention to home theater, this is a soundbar after all, we queued up a couple of big budget films like Top Gun Maverick and Avatar. And straight away, let me just say this. If you have a big room and a truly big screen, you need to experience a bar like the theater for yourself. It filled the front of our room with sound in a way few bars can, sounding eerily reminiscent of a traditional 3.1.2 type setup. Now, I'm stopping myself from claiming the theater can pull off a true surround effect on its own because in our room, it didn't. Sound came up to the sides of our listening position and as far as directly overhead, but never from behind. Now, this could be due to the fact that our room is open on one side and having parallel walls does matter when it comes to all-in-one sound bars and achieving a full 360 degree sound field. But if you have an open concept space like ours or like the ones featured in BNO's own marketing materials, you may have to settle for 180 degree immersion rather than a full 360. Of course, if you own any of BNO's other compatible speakers like the BioLab 28, you can use them as surrounds in order to complete the experience. With that word of caution out of the way, scale, dynamics, movement, you name it, when fed a Dolby Atmos or surround sound signal, the aptly named theater was epic. Whether using direct mode or the brand's own true image, the sound was cinematic and captivating. Dialogue was clear and intelligible with terrific separation from the rest of the mix. And like I said earlier, you can dial the theater's sound to taste, and this includes numerous ways to attack dialogue specifically. Now, I prefer the bar's default setting, though when I created a profile for Christy based on her feedback, she liked the dialogue aids turned up just a click or two. Now, for those of you who watch a lot of broadcast television, think news, sports, and other live programming, this is one area where I feel the theater comes up just a little bit short. Even with BNO's processing, it never sounded all that great. Dialogue was still largely intelligible and the sound tracked with the action, but the sense of occasion or spaciousness was lost for me, and it sounded more or less like a a budget soundbar, which I can't really explain. Aside from that, the theater actually ranks as one of my favorite soundbars, as well as one of my favorite B&O speakers available today. It's just got some pretty stiff competition. Compared to our once reference, all-in-one soundbar, the Ambio, and yes, I am talking about the original Ambio. The theater doesn't do anything that you can't technically also do with the Ambio, apart from, you know, being able to expand it using other B&O speakers. Now that, that's exclusive to the theater. But both bars, they sound great. Both are infinitely adjustable and both work very well in large rooms and with large displays. The Ambio simply does all of this for way less money. It also looks like a Geo Metro next to a super yacht. Overall, I prefer the theater, but I'm not going to lie to you and say that it is the smarter buy because it's not. Compared to our current reference, the Samsung Q990B, the Sammy is a full surround system with wireless surrounds and a separate subwoofer. In terms of its physical footprint, it, it does lose to the far more streamlined theater, but at roughly one seventh the cost, it can create a cinematic experience that is difficult to surpass. Even its two channel chops, when set up correctly, are very impressive. Obviously, I prefer the look and day-to-day -day sound and livability of the Bang & Olufsen, but like with the Ambio, the Samsung is going to make more sense for more people. So how does the theater compare to the smaller, call it more budget-friendly, Bio Sound Stage soundbar from Bang & Olufsen? In smaller to medium-sized rooms, I'm not convinced the stage isn't the better option. I mean, obviously, it's the better value. In a bedroom, the theater may be too much of a good thing. It definitely felt like we weren't using it to its fullest potential since most of our usage occurred at night. Especially if you consume mostly Dolby content, I think you're going to be thrilled with the stage. While it may lack some of the theater's capability, it's still a Bang & Olufsen product, and the experience is all there, but for way less. This is a luxury product through and through. In the Biosound Theater, it's just one of the more emotionally captivating home theater components that I've experienced. I mean, it's hands down the most beautiful soundbar on the market right now. Does it offer a performance you can only achieve with it and nowhere else? That's likely going to be up for some debate, because as close as the Ambi or Samsung may get to matching the sound of the theater, neither will ever be the genuine article, because like with every B&O product before it, the Biosound Theater has that X factor that just keeps me coming back for more. It may not be for everyone or every budget, but it's definitely a soundbar worth experiencing. And to the lucky few who get to own one, bravo. So that's it. That is now my take on the Biosound Theater. But before we go, what'd you think of it? 
Okay, well, I'm going to switch things up just a little bit and start first with the question I think most people want answered, and that is how do you feel that the theater compares to the Bail Lab 28 set we reviewed mm. back in Austin? Mm. Okay. Uh, let's just assume that uh, in this exercise, all Bang & Olufsen products are free, and I can just pick which one I want. Um, I would still pick the 28s. I would still pick the 28s, even though they are twice as expensive. They're fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, they're just, they're, just they're, I mean, they're give quite or take a, lot. a couple, you know, a few hundred dollars. Um, in terms of inter interacting with the product, day to day livability, control of the product, there is no difference between the two. There's none. Um, so that's not the reason that I pick them. Um, I pick them because I'm such a stickler for tradition. And I just like seeing those two columns on either side of the television. And at the end of the day, and this is so bougie, I like that wood opening up. I do. I love that it opens up. <laughs> um, I think that that's just cool AF. Um, so, yeah. I. I uh... So you're saying that you think they sound the same? No, they, they don't sound the same. I will say for two-channel listening, as good as the theater is, and it is really, really good, um, the 28s are better for that traditional stereo experience. So let's say the 28s are a perfect 10. The theater's going to get you around a 7, 7.5, subjectively speaking. Um, and so knowing that I do a lot of more listening in stereo than you know anything else, uh, the 28s would make more sense for me. Mm-hmm. But in terms of simplicity, jack of all trades, um, the theater's really hard to beat. Okay. Well, I was just, I know that people were going to ask. So yeah, I just yeah. figured let's just get that out of the way. Okay. I mean, as far as what I think, I think it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. The wood with the chrome, uh, the, that aluminum base, it yeah. feels really modern yet vintage at the mm -hmm. same time. I mean, if you, you know, you can kind of look back at some um, furniture that that reminds me of, you know, stuff that I know you're really into. Mm -hmm. uh, the remote, the remote for it is absolutely stunning. Something yeah. I'm actually a bit surprised you didn't call attention to in the review. I didn't mention the remote control, um, partially because it is the same remote control that B, uh, Bang & Olufsen has had for almost 10 years now. It is the same remote for all of their products. It is largely the same remote that I've been familiar with from that brand since the late 90s. It's just gotten stylistically a little bit more streamlined. Um, there is one annoying thing about the remote, though. Okay, what is that? That is, is that you have to I'm quite literally completely take it apart to change the batteries. As far as looks and functionality, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. It has the best range of any remote I've ever used. Uh, line of sight, don't even need it. It's fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. All right. Well, I'm, I, it's good that we got that conversation covered. <laughs> okay. But I'm, I'm, I'm actually really, really struggling to get past the $8,000 price tag. I mean, yeah. it's ridiculously expensive, even for Bang & Olufsen. Yeah. I, I suppose if you can't swing a fifteen thousand dollar pair of twenty eights or eleven grand for the eighteens, mm -hmm. maybe you look at it as an opportunity to have a more affordable something another from Bang and Olufsen. Yeah, I, because it does sound amazing for two channels. So in that respect, I suppose it's kind of a the bargain option, depending on how you look at it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I feel like if they had come in at a price around 5000 maybe even six. I yeah. think this becomes a much larger player in the overall home theater slash, you know, sound bar conversation. Yeah. Um, as much as I loved it for music, I personally think the Ambio and Samsung are, and this is going to conflict with your review, I think that they are about as good, if not better, at delivering a sound, a surround sound performance, at least in our particular room. Oh, 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 okay. Um, and, you know, in my opinion, I don't think either of those are, they're no slouch when it comes to music playback, like traditional, like no. stereo music. No, so no, it makes not it, at all. It makes it incredibly difficult for me mm -hmm. to understand 
the eight thousand dollar price tag as it's configured. Mm -hmm. It's closer to seven if you um, go with their entry level that the gray fabric. The gray fabric, yeah, the more traditional silver finish. and black. Um, I mean, I get it. It's exceptionally well made and style wise, style wise, it, mm -hmm. it simply kicks the pants off the other two. Sure. But I'm I'm not sure that a chrome base and wood slat grills command the price being asked. Well, there's there's definitely there's definitely more to the cost than like the finish that you're seeing. It isn't the wood slats and the aluminum that's costing obviously seven, eight, nine grand, whatever it is. Um, there's manufacturing, there's processing, there's programming, there's all of these things that kind of play into it. And Bang & Olufsen lately um, has really gone about manufacturing their products in a far more sustainable way. That's also going to carry uh, with it a premium price tag. But Bang & Olufsen's a luxury product, like we say in the review. And like with luxury products, you know, you can look at a Bugatti, you can look at a Bentley, you can look at even a BMW. Or uh, if you want to go fashion, any fashion label, Prada, Gucci, things like this. Like technically what I'm wearing covers my body and is comfortable. And some may call it fashion and some may not. But there's, if this shirt were from Prada, I guarantee you it would cost five times what I paid for it, if not 15 times what I paid for it. And that's kind of the same argument. And that's uh, about like Ambio versus you know, theater. Um, but that's that X factor that I refer to and why I keep kind of coming back to Bang & Olufsen because it's not that the price tag elevates their performance. There's something about their products that for me represent a total storyline from creation to my enjoyment that not only I can experience, see, hear, and feel, but that I really feel as if as a brand, they have taken everything into account and given it to me. Whereas how often on this channel do we look at a product and go, if not for this, it would have been that, you know? If not, if it would have only had this and there's not one thing on the theater or the 28s or even our level that I'm like, I wish it did this. I just personally, while I really really enjoyed having the product in the house and mm -hmm. i it was just a ton of fun mm -hmm. uh, there are just there were aspects of it that i i i feel fell short of the um promise being um suggested in terms of like the marketing and the price tag sure i i i don't know i just and i th i think that if any of these other brands like Samsung, as an example, mm -hmm. ever managed to come out with something that doesn't look like a sock covering a, a you know piece of plastic. Piece of plastic. Yeah. Bang and Olufsen could, you know, have some things to potentially think about. And I don't typically have an issue with price. Um, you know, I I don't want to ever tell somebody what they should charge for their goods or services? I, I think it comes down to economies of scale. Obviously, Bang & Olufsen products are less, um, they're, not, they're not white goods. You're not gonna walk, rock up to a Costco and find 50 boxes of something. Not to say that they don't make 50 of these, but they're obviously sold in lower quantities and that also has an effect on price. Um, but design and exclusivity is kind of their kind of their thing i don't know i'm just really conflicted about the price i i, I really do like it again mm -hmm. and i absolutely enjoyed it mm -hmm. it's just uh you know eight thousand dollars <laughs> i don't know hey well another thing uh, this last thing we'll do to harp on price uh it does appear and some of our uk viewers uh one of which i i believe owns a bang and olufsen store um it would appear that here in the u.s uh the roles have reversed a little bit and our prices are a little bit higher than if you live in Europe or elsewhere in the world and were to go to buy this product. Um, what's gonna really blow your mind is I'm willing to bet money the vast majority of theater customers aren't even using it as a soundbar. I think the vast majority of theater customers love this product and they're buying it to be a center channel because they already own 228s or 428s 
you know, front and back, and they've been waiting for a center speaker. And that I, I'm willing to bet the vast majority of people that use it as a sound bar are the ones living in the U.S. It's it's a cool product. It's, it's a fantastic. It sounds product. great. Yeah. I I I hope you know that I I do really like it. Yeah. You know, I just I I guess I feel a little bit more like the viewing public. Yeah. At this point. In this particular instance, but uh, yeah, it's a it's a it's a costly one. <laughs> well, anything else? No. All right, guys, that is now our review of the Bang & Olufsen Bio Sound Theater uh, soundbar with an R E, not yes, an E R. Yes, with an R E. <laughs> that's that's uh, where the, that's, that's where, where the, the extra theater. six grand costs come <laughs> yeah, from. There you go, there you go. If it was theater. Uh, <laughs> That's 2000. <laughs> Theater is six. I kid, Bang & Olufsen, we love you. Uh, anyway, let us know. Did you like this video? Did you like this product? Let us know down in the comments below. Question of the day for you is, what do you think? What do you think about this <laughs> so product? So original. <laughs> yeah, what, no, no, no. What do you think about this product? Like, how would you use it? It's really kind of... Uh, an entire home theater system in one. It can be a center channel. It can be a music system. Like, how would you use it? Where Where do you see the value in the theater? Uh, anyway, let's get the conversation going. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. This is pretty important that you probably do that because a lot of you guys are saying that YouTube's not sending you our videos even though you're subscribed. So go ahead and turn on notifications and that way they have no choice but to tell you i.e. notify you. Uh, if you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that's a great way that you continue to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here, and we thank you very, very much for that. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that's it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound <laughs> of your system is you. <laughs> She's just making faces at me. Um, uh, so how do I end it? We'll see you on the next yes, one. Yes, yes. So thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next video, guys.